Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with world-famous Bavarian-style pretzels. That's right, you've heard me say many times that fork don't lie, but you know what else doesn't lie? When it comes to pretzels, lie doesn't lie. Since you can always tell an authentic lie dip Bavarian pretzel by its signature brown crust. Except I'd be lying if I told you we were actually gonna use lie. Since it's not the 1800s and nobody has lie lying around, but I'm gonna show you a very safe alternative that chemically speaking is almost identical. But first things first, and before we get to that, we gotta make a very simple, almost no need dough, which will start by stirring a little bit of brown sugar into some warm water. And then once that's dissolved, we'll go ahead and add a little bit of yeast. And we only need a little bit because this is gonna rise overnight, which is also why we don't have to knead it very much as you'll see. And once we've added the yeast, we'll let that sit for about 10 minutes just to sort of wake up while we go ahead and grab the rest of our ingredients, which will include some melted butter and about a half a cup of a good German lager, or of course the beer of your choice. Then we'll go ahead and give that a quick whisking before transferring in our last two ingredients, which would be some bread flour, and of course, we're also gonna need some salt. And then once all that's in there, we'll go ahead and take our hand and mix this until we formed a relatively stiff dough. All right, please note, this is gonna be a lot less wet than the typical no knead doughs we've done in the past. But that's okay, it's still gonna work beautifully, as you'll see. And yes, in case you're wondering, you can use all-purpose flour. Although generally bread flour works better for these kind of things because it has a little more gluten, which is gonna help give these their signature somewhat chewy texture. But anyway, what we'll do once that comes together is transfer it onto our work surface. And we will only need this for about a minute or two before forming it into as neat a ball as possible. And what we'll do is transfer it back into the bowl we mixed it after buttering the inside. And then we will simply cover this and let it sit overnight on the counter or until it's roughly doubled in size. And because this dough, as I mentioned, is a little bit drier than the ones we usually work with, it might not look that smooth and beautiful the next day. But don't worry, all we need to do is transfer that to our work surface and just knead it for like a minute or two until it smooths out or until we can shape and manipulate that into having a nice smooth surface. At which point we'll place it back into the bowl and let it rise for about two or three more hours or until it almost doubles in size again. And while we're waiting for that second rise, we can move on to the only other thing we need to prep and that would be our baked baking soda bath. And for that, we will transfer some baking soda into a heat proof dish at which point we're gonna transfer that into the center of a 300 degree oven for exactly one hour, at which point we'll pull it out and let it cool, and then very, very carefully whisk that into two cups of very hot tap water. And I do mean carefully. All right, the whole reason we bake the baking soda is to increase the pH to a level closer to lye than regular baking soda. So we wanna be very careful as this will irritate your skin and definitely your eyes. So make sure you keep that in a safe place. I mean, you are after all the Levi Strauss of not injuring anyone in your house. Oh, and I should mention, you might get a few clumps that won't dissolve, although eventually they will. But I just usually crush them with the back of a spoon and keep whisking. And I think that's why a lot of people do this in boiling water, but I guess I'm afraid of noxious fumes. So I just use hot water. But anyway, once that's set, we'll go back and check our dough. And if everything's gone according to plan, it should look something like this. And if we poke it with our finger, the dough holds the marks and they don't fill right in. Okay, that would mean the dough is still rising. So that was perfect, which means we'll transfer it back to our work surface and we will flatten it and press out all the air with our hands. I know, we do that every time, but that makes this next step a lot easier, which is where we take our bench scraper and divide this into eight equal portions, or six or four if you want bigger pretzels. And then as per usual, each of those portions will go ahead and form into a smooth ball by rubbing it on the countertop or by picking it up and stretching the dough from the top to the bottom. And that's it, once we have our eight portions formed, we'll go ahead and let those sit for about five minutes before we move on to the shaping of the pretzel. And the first step in that process is to roll this into like a sausage shape. Oh yes, it's best if we start with the worst. And then what we'll do is use our fingertips to kind of press this flat into a rectangle shape. And then once that's been accomplished, We'll fold about a third of it from the edge farthest away from us to the center, and we will press that in with our fingertips. And then we'll do the exact same thing with the edge of dough closest to us, at which point we're ready to start rolling this on the table under our hands into basically what will be like a rope about 15 inches long. 
And what that little folding move did was basically build some structure in the dough, and from what I hear, improve the texture of the final product. And then, very important, once we've rolled the dough under our hands, and we have that basic rope shape formed, we are gonna stop rolling the middle, and that's because we want the dough in the center to be fatter, which in the world of pretzels is referred to as the belly. And then what we'll do once our dough is about 15 to 18 inches long, is form our pretzel by simply crossing over those thinner ends, which we can do once or twice, or even three times if you want. And then we'll simply just bring those two ends over the top across the belly. And that really is all there is to it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make two at this point for filming purposes. And on this second one, as I want to shape it, I decided as a little bit of an experiment to cross the ends of the dough over twice, just to see which one we like better. Except I'm pretty sure once he's baked, we couldn't tell the difference. But anyway, the point is you twist these things up any which way you want. And that's it, once those are formed, they are ready for our baked baking soda bath. So I slipped on some protective gloves and I attempted to transfer that first pretzel into the bath where we wanna make sure both sides are coated in that liquid for at least 20 to 30 seconds. The only problem was these gloves were way too thick and I really couldn't even feel what I was grabbing and I had no control, which is why for a lot of this I was just splashing the liquid over the top. Okay, it was exactly like I was using robot hands, which I can now tell you is not as fun as it sounds. So these gloves were a terrible choice because I had no touch. And if there's one thing you need when you cook, it's touch. And as I went to pull it out to transfer it onto my parchment lined sheet pan, it just fell apart. So I tried to put it together the best I could. So for the second one, I switched to some much thinner latex gloves, which worked out a lot better. Okay, as you'll see, the pretzel still came apart, but at least I could actually feel what I was grabbing and fixing. And in case you're wondering why we're going through all this, is because by soaking the surface of the dough in a highly alkaline solution, we're actually denaturing the dough in the surface, which once baked is gonna give us that beautiful signature brown color and chewy texture and unmistakable pretzel flavor. Otherwise, without this bath, it's just gonna taste like a piece of bread. And while it is true lye works better, by baking the baking soda, we do increase that pH up to a level high enough where we're able to get something very, very close. And then once our pretzels have been dipped, while they're still damp, we'll go ahead and sprinkle some nice coarse salt over the top. And they actually sell pretzel salts, but I find some nice large flaky sea salt works as well. And then once these have been salted, we need to let them rise about 30 minutes before they go in the oven. During which time they're not gonna quite double in size, but they'll definitely puff up a little bit. And then the last thing here before these go in the oven is that we'll wanna take a razor blade or sharp knife and we'll make one slash like this across the belly and also if we want a couple slashes on the smaller parts, although those are really more for looks, All right, the ones we're doing on the bellies is so the dough splits there and not have it randomly split across the top, which might not look quite as nice. And that's it, once cut, those are ready to transfer into the center or upper center of a 475 degree oven for about 12 minutes or until beautifully and deeply browned and looking like this. Oh yeah, those look legit. And as you can see, thanks to those cuts, these split right where we wanted and not across the top. So that worked out. And at this point, we'll go ahead and transfer those onto a cooling rack. And then I spent a few moments trying to figure out which side was the best to photo before realizing these look good from any angle. So I settled on this one and I took a few pictures while they cooled down just a bit. And I know I'm always making you wait for baked goods to cool down before you eat them. Well, here you're in luck since these are totally appropriate to eat warm. And what's even more appropriate is to eat them next to a German beer. And that, my friends, really was a magnificent soft pretzel. All right, we have that gorgeously browned, beautifully crusty exterior, bejeweled with those crystals of salt. And then inside what I think is a perfect soft pretzel texture. Okay, firm without being heavy and chewy without being tough. And right here, I'll let you take a nice look at the inside while I stop to sip some beer. And I generally don't like when people say, oh, this is so delicious you could eat it plain, since I almost never want to eat things plain. But here it is pretty much true. Although having said that, a beer cheese dip, like our Kentucky beer cheese recipe, would be absolutely perfect with these, as would our hot cheese fondue. Or if you're not into cheese, just some sweet hot mustard would also be absolutely beautiful. Or as my Bavarian friends highly recommend, just simply spread with some soft butter. So that's how I enjoyed the rest of this one, which of course was incredible. 
and I went ahead and formed and dipped and baked the other six, which because I had a beer, were a little bit easier and came out a little bit better, which probably wasn't all because of the beer. It was probably because I already filmed two successfully, so I didn't really care as much how these came out. And I found when it comes to cooking, if you're not nervous and worried about how things are gonna come out, they always seem to come out better. In fact, I'm pretty sure that goes for other things besides cooking. But anyway, that's it. My take on Bavarian style pretzels. Even though we didn't use lye, I thought these came out amazingly well. And that is no lie. And neither is the following statement. Since I'll finish up by saying I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.